This spreadsheet's getting a little bit big, my dudes. Hi, welcome to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Clan Battle 3. Clan Battle 3 is pretty cool. It's not as hard as Minotaur. I know you guys got screwed over real hard last time. We got screwed over real hard too, but like, I swear guys, it's not that bad this time. This time you guys will be stronger, more knowledgeable, and just all around, I think the boss mechanics just aren't as bad as Minotaur. Minotaur was just quite hard, and like, if you guys got discouraged from that, I would really recommend like, just looking forward to this video and looking forward to this clan battle. This one and the next one are going to be relatively easy compared to the Taurus. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video and let's start with some team comps. So as you guys can see, I've remodeled the worksheet and there is just a lot more going on now. There are a lot more characters to consider. There are a lot more things that we discovered in clan battle too. But let's work from the top down very methodically. So let's start with the battery comps. So originally this was a Saren and a non-Saren comp. The Saren comp still exists. It's exactly the same as it was before. However, what I've discovered is that if you do need some level of survivability, you could actually add the Yukari in instead of the Saren. What's really cool about this one is that Yukari does provide TP boost. However, you do have to like match up some of the timings to manipulate her TP. Saren is relatively straightforward with her TP booster where she just always juices out Makoto. As a result, Makoto just fires off about a million UBs a second. On the other hand, Yukari is a little bit more complex where she actually juggles heals and TP boost and whatever. As for Yukari's TP boost, you do need to do a little bit of like timeline manipulation to ensure that you get the TP to where you want it to. For example, this might might mean like holding Jun's, Kari's, and Shiori's TP until Makoto gets the TP boost from Yukari. Or you could play it as auto as possible except for Jun and have the TP go into any of these three characters. Honestly, if you can't be stuffed timelining, I would at least do that. So make sure that Yukari's TP actually goes into one of the three DPSs rather than Jun's. Team 2 looks relatively the same to me as the last CBs except for the fact that PDPS, this more often than not means Susana. You could also run a support such as like Kokoro in here and it will still do pretty good damage. However, what's really interesting is that you can actually do a Kokoro switch or a 5 star tank. What I mean by that is that if I come down here, the frontal tank example is that if in your guild you actually have a 5 star Makoto or a 5 star Kari, for some of the bosses, not all of them, especially not Orc, you could just use them to tank and then you can actually take another support or a DPS. So this is actually a very, very common formation that we used. We'd borrow a 5 star Kari and then we'd have the rest of these guys and then we would build a timeline for this. However, this formation did stop working by the time we hit phase 2 so we couldn't like use this too much. You could actually work off of this and add in a defensive support instead of like Kokoro or Susana, for example. And perhaps that would give enough sustain for this frontal tank to actually keep working. A lot of the times, the defensive supports actually do have a little bit of damage. For example, Yui has that one hit on her skill one or two where she actually does like straight single target magic damage. With that being said though, let's jump back to team two. As you guys can see again, this is pretty straightforward. There's nothing much more to be said actually, to be honest. Quick reminder that each team needs about two defense down. So you have Jun and Makoto here and you have Makoto and Mitsuki here. All right, now let's get to the third team, which we call the DD. It's a little DD has uh, the leftovers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what we do have is a Nozomi here. However, this like, you could actually consider doing a frontal tank here as well. This borrowed Makoto, if you can get a five star one and chances are in phase one, you can probably do it. If the boss doesn't do that much damage to you, then you could do the frontal tank with the Makoto and then just fill it out with another DPS. Getting rid of a tank in any of these comps is always a good thing because you're trying to maximize DPS. So all of these guys are all flex spots and they just flex like depending on what you have, right? However, there is something a little bit different about this CB. The difference is that the boss five will actually target target your back line a lot more than it will target your front line. However, let's talk about that when we get there. So one spicy new addition to the worksheet is this magic team here. So with the Kyoka banner that's actually coming out, we can begin to form a magic team. The rationale for Kyoka is she is like the biggest, biggest single target magic DPS ever. Akari is a very important part of the team where she actually brings magic defense down. Kiaru, so don't be too surprised to see her. So she actually also provides magic defense down, but the skill itself is not that good. So the values is not too much. It's just like Shinobu in that it actually kind of provides like a minimal amount of magic defense down because it is actually combined with a physical defense down. However, with her being a magic attacker as well as having that little bit of magic defense down, she is definitely something that's more viable, I guess, to form this magic comp. As for this last MDPS, we can actually come over here and have a look at, well, oh, look at all these not recommended. If we manage to actually get Ilya, which I don't think we do, she will occupy that space. If she does come out, then what you would hope to do is actually borrow her instead, or Kyoka instead, and actually have all three of these. In the front, you're still going to need a tank like all of these mages are going to melt the moment something hits them. So now I just want to quickly go through each of these characters and what I learned about a lot of them because there's actually a lot of like really funky stuff. Miyako was one of the answers to the orc chief where she was like one of the only ways to actually tank him. Kuka I did not use at all. Jun's defense down really really made a difference and I can't blame like the top clans for wanting her so bad. Nozomi actually died to orc boss phase 2 for us and only when she was combined with Tamaki could she actually live. These guys not much to say, physical defense down, they just made us do more damage. Shinobu was actually an answer to 
Minotaur, where the Minotaur would actually push back your frontmost unit. If you had Shinobu in the right spot, she could actually summon her dad to actually take that push. What this means is that your tank doesn't get pushed, your second in line doesn't get chunked by the Minotaur, and like you're doing more damage. However, Shinobu in does mean that somebody has to come out, so you do need to consider it and just timeline. Timeline, timeline, timeline. We've got magic defense down here. I haven't tried them yet, so no notes here. Physical DPS. So pretty much like I almost always use the archers, but one thing to note about the archers that really came in like non-clutch, what's the opposite of clutch? Whatever it is, it's that they don't have lifesteal and when they get chunked, they die. And that is really, really different to actually the frontliners. The majority of the frontliners actually have lifesteal and sustain. What this means is that you're actually more likely to be able to survive with these guys than you can these guys if like the boss is just doing a whole bunch of AoE damage. For example, Minotaur smacked down and Susana would be the first one to die because she just didn't have any sustain. If I come back over to Magic DPS, I haven't tried these guys yet, so no notes on them. Back over here, offensive support. So Kokoro is a dream come true. She just does everything. Like if you can put her in a comp, you put her in the comp. Typically though, to really, really min max, you leave her at three stars so that she can actually get the extra TP gain. If you make her too tanky, you might not actually be able to like get her to UB before everyone else UBs. So just a quick reminder, Kokoro's UB actually buffs the offensive capabilities of everyone else. So you want to use this before everyone else UBs. Monica is quite good, especially if you use her to carry over, but I wouldn't recommend using her like if you can stack the team up with other units. The buff is really good where she gives a lot of action speed and a lot of attack. However, a lot of utility is lost because of her stun, which bosses are just immune to and her AoE UB. Saren is integral, especially to the battery comp. Like this comp is just really, really good. Honestly, like this comp you could play on auto and it's probably almost optimal DPS. One thing I forgot to mention guys about this comp is that it actually does not work on Wyvern. So Wyvern actually forces your team to walk up forward more or something. It's really, really weird. But Saren actually ends up juicing Shiori, which is not what you want. So Yukari, as I explained before, she's kind of the survivability version of Saren where she actually gives the heal and a magical shield. This magical shield was pretty useful, especially against like Minotaur and the fourth boss. I think the dude who like does the horn thing. Ayana is a very interesting one where you can actually disrupt some of the boss's attacks with her UB. Unfortunately, I did not have the pleasure of testing her out. So you guys, if you guys want to go ahead and give it a shot, I'll definitely recommend trying Ayana because getting rid of some of the boss's attacks, it could actually mean that you can do the frontal tank. Guys, Akino is a sleeper. What's really interesting about Akino is that she is more like an off tank, right? But one of her skills, which is the rejuvenating jewel, something like that, sometimes, just sometimes, it provided the necessary sustain to make a comp like this work. Other times, for example, on Orc, it would make this comp work because Orc would actually kill your five-star Nozomi. So guys, don't sleep on Akino. If you notice that like your team is just dying, Akino might be the answer. As for the defensive supports, Shizuru did not see any use. Maho did not see any use, but Chika, Chika is very interesting. So some of the key points about Chika is that she summons a little fairy, which takes a hit from the boss. She reduces the physical attack of the boss, which is really freaking good, especially when we need some survivability. She also gives physical attack up to your frontal units. And last but not least, she gives an AoE heal to everybody. So you can see that she's actually quite a good support and I think we used her in some of like the boss one to three, something like that. Personally, I did not have Chica built so I did not have the pleasure of using her but I did see her work a lot. As for myself, I actually did manage to use Yui because the physical defense buff combined with the AoE heal actually helped me live through one of my teams. I think it was this one or something. So I was actually able to bring one of my more fragile teams. I actually can't remember which one it was but plus Yui in and just took out one of the DPSs and it would survive and do more damage than if I just let them all die. However, guys, remember that this is not always the case. You may actually let them all die and they could probably do more damage than a team that is filled with supports. All right, guys, we're kind of done with all of these guys. Like pretty much like these notes here, they kind of summarize what I've just gone through. So the last thing I want to talk about today is actually the bosses themselves. So I have the stats here and I'm pretty sure they're right this time. I'm sorry for the wrong stats last time. So as you can see here, we'll be up against Wyvern, Griffin, Flower, Cyclops, and the Pig. It's actually pigs because there are two of them because Gemini, there's two of them. So the first run through should be pretty straightforward, super easy from 60 to 80. You can see that the boss levels have actually not increased. However, your own rank has increased. What this means is that whilst the bosses have stayed at the same strength, you have grown in strength. That is why I'm saying guys, like this one should not be nearly as hard as the last one. As for HP, we've got six, eight, 10, 12, 20 mil, exactly the same as last CB. Multipliers are gonna be exactly the same, same for all of them to be honest. However, let's have a quick look at the PDEF, MDEF values for all of these bosses. So we've got 200, 
should pretty much, uh, it's all consistent here. What this immediately tells me is that magic teams are probably not going to thrive on phase one of the bosses. So just quickly, the biggest reason is that there really is only one source of magic defense down. Uh, like Kiaru is like kind of a half a source, if not a third of a source. But yeah, to be honest, phase one, like it's pretty, pretty easy. Actually, when I think about it, this could potentially be better than this. Because like I said in my previous video, this Kyoka is kind of like a Kari and your DD does not have, oh dear, your DD does not have like a really, really strong physical DPS unless you pulled for Arisa. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. I think you guys have faced these bosses before, except for Cyclops. And Cyclops is the only thing that's really, oh, medium. The only thing Cyclops is new is the medium magic damage to all units and may inflict bind. This is just going to be annoying as heck and that's just kind of how it is. There's going to be a lot of RNG again. All right, guys, so for the Union Burst on phase two, I have not updated this. I am very sorry about that. But effectively, it's the same stuff, except it does more damage and it hurts a lot more. As for the as for the levels, every level goes up by 20. So you can see 80 to 160 to 80. HP is unchanged, just like all of the other CBs. And for PDEF and MDEF, we do have a couple of changes. So Wyvern gains 50 physical defense. Griffin gains 50 magical defense. Flower gains 70 physical defense. Cyclops gains 50 and... Is that 120 magic defense? And pig gains 90 physical defense. All right, let's talk about this. So for here, I would definitely use my magic team here if I had one on Wyvern. I wouldn't use it on Griffin because as you can see, Griffin's magic defense went up. Flower is another place that you could use the magic team because there's a 70 point difference between the P defense and the M defense. Cyclops, try not to use your magic team. Try to use a physical team. Another thing to think about is that if it does damage to all units, like these two bosses, you have to consider like not using archers for one because they don't have lifesteal and you have to also consider using some level of sustain such as like Akino or like uh, Chika. So for Pig, we have a large physical damage based on HP and uh, I don't know, man, but that sounds kind of like Shizuru to me. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't even have her for God's sake. So if you guys like test it out, let me know if it actually works. But yeah, so just briefly on boss five, I guess for both phases, like you don't really want to bring the magic comp for phase two. You could consider it in phase one, but even then you don't really want to. And the reason is again, because the pigs actually target your backline. If instead of having a bunch of archers, you could instead like replace uh, Shiori with uh, Eriko or something. What you have is a whole bunch of units that can actually self-sustain to get through the pig. I think that actually wraps up the bosses. Uh, is there anything left to say? Uh... The last thing to note is that we will be getting chicka shards this time. Woo! All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Let's call it a wrap here. I know this was a long one, but there was a lot that I learned and I wanted to share as much of it as I could. So you guys know what time it is. It's secret message time. So the secret message today is CB3 prep time. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. It tells me that you've actually made it to this part of the video, which is the end. And I am forever grateful. I put a lot of hours into these videos and this freaking spreadsheet, to be honest, like a lot of research actually goes into this. I don't just build this based on my crappy experiences. I actually do a lot of research. All right, with all that said and done, I think there's nothing left to be said except if this video has helped you you know what to do like share subscribe pin follow this that other verb if you guys have any questions or you're just feeling a little lonely drop by the discord otherwise thank you guys so much for watching and i will just catch you in the next video bye bye